Welcome to the EQFit Podcast. Our mission is to equip people to prosper in every aspect of their life. Whether you're at home or in the workplace, we explore practical ways of improving success, satisfaction, finding balance, and building enjoyable and beneficial relationships. Thank you for joining us. We're going to continue our exploration of the four C's of leadership. We did competence in the last episode. This episode, we're going to focus on character and how building a will-do attitude comes from character and leadership. And that will-do attitude is for the leader themselves, but it's also for their team members. It's for the people that are a part of their team. Character is very important. It forms the foundation of effective leadership. It shapes how leaders interact with their teams and how they navigate challenges. The Life Thrive Leadership Program that I've been working on with Dr. Chuck Coker specifically emphasizes the importance of developing a growth mindset and then mastering self-regulation which will foster a results-oriented culture in a team and in organizations, and that's what we want. These components are crucial in building a will-do attitude that drives success and innovation within an organization. So let's break that down, and let's start with self-regulation. It truly is a pillar of composure and discipline. If you think of self-regulation as a leader, it's the ability to manage your emotions, your behaviors in a variety of different situations. It allows leaders to remain calm under pressure. It helps to demonstrate resilience in the face of challenges and lead by example with discipline and with composure. Developing self-regulation is absolutely essential for several different reasons. Number one, thoughtful decision-making. Leaders who can regulate their emotions, navigate those emotions, make more rational and informed decisions. Now, I know that sounds strange. What does the emotional side have to do with the rational side? Well, I guarantee you, if you think about it enough, if you study it enough, there is a direct correlation between emotional load and the ability to make good decisions and to think at higher levels. The heavier the emotional load somebody is carrying, the more they're cycling in strong emotions, the less able they are to access higher cognitive functions. So it makes sense that the best decision-making is going to be when you are self-regulating your emotions in a way that leads to better outcomes, better decisions. You're less likely to be swayed by stress or by impulsive reactions, and that leads to better outcomes for teams and for organizations. The second thing here to think about under self-regulation is maintaining professionalism. Self-regulated leaders maintain their professionalism even under very difficult circumstances. This consistency builds trust and it builds respect among team members, enhancing the leader's credibility. That's really important to leadership effectiveness. And the third thing to look at under self-regulation is earning respect. A leader who can stay composed and disciplined under pressure sets a powerful example for their team. This behavior earns respect and admiration of team members. It fosters a culture of mutual respect and high standards. And this is the kind of the paradox of understanding how critical emotional intelligence is as it relates to the rational side and the logical side of what a leader needs to do. They have got to work together. 
when your emotional part of your brain and the rational part of your brain work together, you get your absolute best results. Now, the second big category here under character is a growth mindset, which is literally the engine of continuous improvement. So leaders with a growth mindset believe that abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. This perspective actually fosters a love of learning and resilience. Both of those are essential to great accomplishments. So embracing a growth mindset empowers leaders to do some critical things. First, view challenges as opportunities. Leaders with a growth mindset tend to see challenges as opportunities for growth and for learning. This positive outlook encourages innovation and creative problem solving. The second thing here under this area of growth mindset is value constructive feedback. A growth mindset helps leaders appreciate and seek out constructive feedback. They use feedback to improve their skills and performance, setting a precedent for continuous improvement within their team. And that culture of feedback then cascades down the organization, which is incredibly beneficial. I've seen that happen. The third thing to look at under growth mindset is pursue personal and professional development. Leaders with a growth mindset are committed to their development. This commitment inspires their teams to seek personal and professional growth. It creates a culture of excellence and progress. And isn't that what we want in our teams? So let's break this down into specific skills to enhance character in leaders. And developing character or that will-do attitude in the leader and the team, leaders need to focus on some very specific skills that directly impact effectiveness and success. The first one is resilience and perseverance. Resilient leaders can bounce back from setbacks. They can maintain their focus on long-term goals. Perseverance ensures that they stay committed to the vision, even in the face of obstacles. The next skill to develop is adaptive problem solving. Leaders need to be adept at identifying and addressing problems creatively and efficiently. Adaptive problem solving skills enable leaders to navigate complex situations and find effective solutions. Continuous learning and improvement is the next set of skills. Leaders should cultivate a habit of continuous learning and self-improvement. This kind of mindset actually ensures that they stay updated with industry trends and best practices It enhances their ability to lead effectively. Keeping their pulse, their finger on the pulse of what's going on in their industry and in their team, that's a critical aspect, and that comes through this continuous learning and improvement. The next skill to think of is self-management. Effective self-management involves setting personal goals, managing time efficiently, and maintaining a healthy work-life balance. I want to talk about that a little bit more. One of the biggest challenges I see out there today is people struggling to manage time efficiently. And a lot of that has to do with remote workers and how to manage and lead remote workers. It also has to do with the remote workers themselves and all of the different distractions now that are a part of that virtual workplace. Because when you work where you live at home, there are all kinds of things that can pull you away from focus on work. And while people are putting in their hours 
we're actually seeing a significant reduction in productivity, and leaders are struggling with how to manage that. And that is a key challenge. So I am encouraging leaders to think of of the value exchange being different than what it's been in the past. Instead of hours for dollars, now it should be accomplishments for dollars so that we can set an accomplishment or an achievement-based value exchange with our team members instead of just saying, yeah, I put in my hours. Well, we all know one person puts in 40 hours and that leads to a certain level of productivity. Somebody else puts in the same 40 hours and they don't have half the productivity or half the accomplishments. All of the distractions, all of the disruptions that can happen. Those are things that leaders have to be aware of, have to be focused on, and it starts with self-management. Leaders who excel in self-management can better support their teams and better lead by example. The next to think about is foster innovation. So encouraging a culture of innovation involves promoting creativity and risk-taking within the team. Leaders need to be able to create an environment where new ideas are valued and explored. So this is moving away from judgment into curiosity. Instead of somebody just saying, oh, that's stupid or that won't work or whatever, leaders need to stop that kind of talk in their teams immediately. They need to foster more positive talk in the team. You know, okay, what does that look like? What do you think about that? How do you see that working? Those are areas where curiosity can be practiced in a fashion that really drives innovation. Here's the next skill to think about, culture alignment. Leaders need to be able to ensure that their actions and decisions align with the organization's values, cultures, and goals. This alignment fosters a cohesive and motivated workforce. I can't stress how important that is. People want to be led. They want to have a vision to follow. And the leader is the one that has to cast that vision. But that vision has to be an alignment with the culture, the values, and the goals of the organization. Because that's when you get better engagement. It's when things move forward more productively. And the last to talk about here is building trust. Trust is the foundation of strong leadership. And remember, leadership is about influence, not about authority. Leaders should strive to build trust through transparency, integrity, and consistent decisions and actions. Now, when you bring those two together, self-regulation and a growth mindset, what do you get? Well, the combination of those does more than just create good managers. It fosters visionary leaders who inspire others. They drive innovation. They cultivate an environment where everyone is motivated to excel. This is how you increase engagement levels. I don't know how many clients I've worked with who do these climate surveys, and I I have a climate survey I like a lot and that I use with a lot of my clients, and they're always asking, how do we get our engagement levels up? We only have 19% engagement, and and 50% neutral and and a bunch of people, you know, disengaged, which basically means actively moving away or even working against the organization. That, That becomes a very critical aspect of opportunity cost and waste in organizations and all kinds of negative things. So when we bring all of these things together under character, this self-regulation and growth mindset, leaders not only can inspire others, drive innovation, cultivate an environment where everybody's motivated to excel, they can also then focus on unlocking some very key elements and outcomes. We just talked about number one, which is higher engagement levels. 
Leaders who practice self-regulation and embrace a growth mindset tend to engage their teams at higher levels and create greater efficiency and effectiveness. They create a positive work environment where team members feel valued and motivated to contribute their best efforts. And I've always said that my definition of engagement is the emotional commitment an employee has to the effort, to the team, to the organization. And I truly believe that is a great definition of what engagement is. When you see an employee that goes above and beyond, what you're seeing is somebody who has a high level of emotional commitment and they'll, they're willing to give more of themselves. The second really important outcome when these things come together under the general area of character in leadership is increased productivity. A will-do attitude nurtured by self-regulation and a growth mindset actually drives teams to achieve their goals. The results-oriented culture enhances productivity and performance across the organization. And the third very important outcome here is a strengthened organizational culture. Leaders who embody strong character traits foster a culture of integrity, resilience, and continuous improvement. This culture attracts and retains top talent, ensuring long-term organizational success. And one of the biggest concerns I hear from CEOs, owners, all kinds of different leaders and businesses and organizations today were having trouble attracting good talent. This is how you attract good talent. Is there less good talent in the employment marketplace today? Maybe, maybe not. But the reality is there is enough good talent out there that if you have a magnetic culture that draws people to you, draws top talent to you, and helps to retain them, then you're never going to lack for good top talent because they're going to want to come and work in your organization. So now let's just dive deeper. Let's get into the very practical aspects of how you go about creating character in leaders and in their leadership style. And it's going to be focused on enhancing interpersonal dynamics through character. So we're okay. We're focusing on self-regulation and a growth mindset, which we know will lead to better interpersonal dynamics. Leaders who develop these skills They foster resilience, adaptability, and a collaborative problem-solving team. This can lead then to more positive chemistry that enhances teamwork and it drives collective success. So in the pursuit of building a will-do attitude in the culture and in the team and cultivating character and leadership, It's essential to focus on developing specific skills that drive effectiveness and success. And I'm going to explore how to enhance resilience, adaptive problem solving, continuous learning, self-management, fostering innovation, culture alignment, and building trust. These are really the core competencies needed in this area of character. So let's start with resilience and perseverance. How do we grow that? How do we develop that in our character, in our leaders? Number one, embrace challenges. View setbacks as learning opportunities rather than failures. Encourage a mindset where challenges are seen as chances to grow and improve. Now, we're still under resilience and perseverance here. Number two. Build a support network. Cultivate relationships with mentors, peers, team members who can provide support and guidance through difficult times. Number three, 
practice self-care. This is really important. Please hear this one. Maintain physical and mental health through regular exercise, proper nutrition, adequate sleep, and mindfulness practices. And mindfulness, as you know, I've defined it as reflecting, meditating, thinking about where you are. It isn't just some kind of strange meditation. This is a focused effort in being mindful about where you are at any given time in any given situation. And then develop a positive outlook, number four. Focus on the positive aspects of situations and maintain an optimistic attitude. This helps in maintaining motivation and energy. That's a big thing I'm seeing in workplaces right now. I'm seeing a real drain on energy that's coming out of a variety of different things. We need to shore up the leakage of energy that's happening with our team members and with our leaders. And number five, under resilience and perseverance, set realistic goals. Break down larger objectives into smaller, more manageable tasks. Achieve these smaller goals helps build confidence and resilience. Okay, so resilience and perseverance was one specific skill to build under leadership and the character that we want to build in our leadership. Here's the second skill we can work on. Adaptive problem solving. Number one, cultivate curiosity. Encourage a culture of curiosity where questions and exploration is welcomed. Don't shut people down. Practice active listening. This leads to creative thinking and innovative solutions. Now the next thing to think about is develop analytical skills. Use data and evidence to inform decision-making. Train yourself and your team to analyze situations thoroughly before you act. Now, that doesn't mean it has to take forever to get there. Just the more you work on this skill of analytical focus, developing those analytical skills, the quicker those decisions can be made. It's like a muscle. The more you exercise it, the better it gets. Number three, encourage collaboration. Bring together diverse perspectives to tackle problems. Collaboratively problem solving often leads to more innovative and effective solutions. Leaders, I want you to hear something from me in this. Sometimes the quietest people in the room have the best ideas. But if everybody's always talking over them, you're never going to hear those. You as a leader need to be very good at drawing out the ideas from those people who are less likely to speak up, not in a way that embarrasses them or makes them uncomfortable, but it is that curiosity. It is fostering a safe, a psychologically safe environment where there's an equality of conversational sharing. We know that those The best teams have those two things in common, psychological safety and a quality of conversational sharing. Number four in this area is stay flexible. Be open to changing strategies and approaches as new and different things come up because you're going to have changes. You're going to have things that you need to adapt to. Be open to those. Uh, Actually build a strategy that becomes change embracing. It doesn't mean you have to accept every change, but it means that you really think it through and you, you don't be so fixated in not changing and just doing things in ways we've always done them that you miss opportunities. And there's a large opportunity cost that goes by the wayside because of that. And then Implement effective, reflective practices. What do I mean by that? Regularly reflect on past decisions and their outcomes. This helps in understanding what worked, what didn't work, how to improve future problem-solving efforts. And that's what this adaptive problem-solving thing is all about. So let's move on to the next 
specific skill that we can work on under this area of character in leadership, continuous learning and improvement. Commit to lifelong learning. Allocate time for reading or attending workshops. Taking courses, online courses are great because that's asynchronous learning. You can do it whenever you want to. You can do it at your own speed. I've created a lot of different online courses and my partner, Dr. Chuck Coker with Life Thrive, between he and I, we have a multitude of different online courses that directly support leadership growth and development. It's a great way to grow, but commit to that and set time aside for that. You will be more efficient and more effective if you will grow in your leadership skills than if you just say, no, I don't have time for that. I'll just keep plugging along and doing what I'm doing. There's a lot better ways of doing things, and we learn and grow. That's what neuroplasticity is all about in our brain. We can continue to grow our brains for as long as we live, as long as our cognitive functions are working well. What's the second thing under continuous learning and improvement? Seek feedback. Regularly ask for feedback from peers, mentors, and team members. Use this feedback constructively to improve your skills and performance. And then help that feedback culture develop in your team because that will be incredibly helpful. If people start to provide feedback, and by the way, feedback is a gift. A gift because there's a risk to it. If I give you feedback, I'm risking having you reject me or having you say that's stupid or, or you don't know what you're talking about. So if you're going to invite feedback, treat it with respect. It is a gift that there is risk attached to. Number three, set personal development goals. Identify areas for improvement and set specific measurable goals to achieve those. Track your progress. That's important. Don't just set goals, but track your progress. Adjust your strategies as you need to because things do change. Number four, Encourage a learning culture. Promote continuous learning within your team by providing resources, opportunities for professional development and recognizing those who pursue growth. One of the things that I say to my clients when I start a leadership development and coaching process with their people and their leaders is I want you to let everybody know that this is an investment in their professional development because that's exactly what you're doing. You would not believe how positive people are. Maybe you would because maybe a lot of you out there are hungry for this. You want that leadership development. You want that professional development, but you're not getting it. This is a way to really foster very, very good engagement and, and to create an environment of learning that is going to set your company apart and give you a true competitive advantage in the marketplace. And then practice reflective learning. After completing projects or significant tasks, take time to reflect on what was learned and how it can be applied to future endeavors. Okay, so now I want to move into a, the area of self-management. There are several things to think about here. Uh, Self-management itself is a skill that we're looking at now. So number one, set priorities. Identify your most important tasks. Focus on completing those first. Number two, time management. Use techniques such as time blocking or other techniques to manage your time effectively. Avoid multitasking when you can which can reduce your productivity. Number three, maintain work-life balance. Set boundaries between work and personal life to avoid burnout. By the Microsoft Workplace Study, 53% of managers and leaders are currently in some phase of burnout. That is a very scary statistic. So do everything you can to avoid that. Find that good balance. Number four, develop self-discipline. Stick to your plans and commitments. 
overcoming procrastination, and maintaining focus are key aspects of self-management. And number five, monitor progress. Regularly review your goals and your progress. Adjust your strategies if you find you're not on track. The next skill to look at is fostering innovation. Create a safe environment which encourages risk-taking and experimentation by creating a culture where failure is seen as a part of the learning process. Number two under fostering innovation, encourage creativity. Provide opportunities for brainstorming sessions and idea sharing. Number three, invest in training. Offer training and development programs focused on creative thinking and innovation methodologies. Number four, reward innovation. Recognize and reward team members who contribute innovative ideas and solutions that make a difference. And number five, stay informed. Keep up with the technology and the advancements in your industry. So let's look at the next one, which is culture alignment. And that starts with defining core values. Clearly articulate core values and vision of the organization to your employees and your team members. Ensure everyone understands and is aligned with those. That is absolutely critical as a leader. Number two, lead by example. Under culture alignment, demonstrate the values and behaviors you expect from your team. Leading by example is powerful. Number three, communicate consistently with clarity. Regularly communicate the importance of organizational culture and values. Number four, align policies and practices. Ensure that organizational policies and practices and procedures reflect and support the core values. Because people are smart. They're going to see when things don't line up, and they're going to look at that and go, what the heck? That's mixed signals. I don't understand what's going on here. You want to remove that doubt and that uncertainty from team members. And then engage employees. Involve team members in discussions about the culture. Encourage feedback and participation in initiatives that promote alignment with core values. And then build trust. Building trust is so, so critical. And if you don't get anything else out of this entire episode, this one alone will go a very long way because I have divine trust as the currency of getting things done because it removes doubt and uncertainty. Trust goes a very long way. How do we do that? Number one, be transparent. Communicate openly and honestly with your team. Number two, follow through on commitments. Always keep your promises and commitments. Number three, show empathy. Practice empathy. Understand and consider the feelings and perspectives of your team members. They don't have to be right, and you don't have to agree to do what they want, but at least show that you are willing to take the time to understand their feelings and perspectives. Number four, encourage open communication. Create an environment where team members feel comfortable sharing their thoughts and concerns without fear of retribution. And number five, recognize contributions and celebrate those. Acknowledge and appreciate the efforts and achievements of your team. Recognition reinforces trust and it encourages continued dedication. So let's close this out by really kind of tying all this up. Developing key leadership skills such as resilience, adaptive problem solving, continuous learning, self-management, fostering innovation, culture alignment, and building trust, all of those are essential for cultivating character and creating a will-do attitude within your team and your organization. By focusing on these areas, leaders can drive higher engagement levels, greater productivity, and a strengthened organizational culture, which ultimately leads 
to sustain success and innovation and satisfaction. If you want more information about this, check out our Life Thrive Leadership Program, which equips leaders with the tools and insights necessary to enhance these skills. It unlocks leaders' full potential and fosters a culture of excellence through developing character in leadership. Thank you for joining us for this episode. If you have any questions about this week's episode or maybe a suggestion for future episodes you'd like us to explore, please contact us through our website at eqfit.org. For more information and inspiration, connect with us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube at EQFit.